Fourth Fleet Command knows about this. The skies above Asia witnessed something extraordinary on a cold winter day. What unfolded was not simply another test flight or a standard aircraft unveiling. It was a bold demonstration of engineering ambition that challenged assumptions about the balance of military aviation. China introduced a fighter that defied convention in every possible way. This was not one new jet, but two taking off together, signaling confidence and strength. The larger of the two, later identified as the J-36, stunned observers with its enormous size, unique design choices, and an appearance that hinted at a new generation of aerial warfare. Even more intriguing, the choice of date carried symbolism that few could ignore. We will return to that symbolic detail later in this analysis, as it reveals much about how China wanted this message to be understood. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button. It helps us beat the YouTube algorithm. The J-36 was not rolled out in secrecy on some isolated runway. Instead, its first public appearance was deliberate, flying in daylight over Chengdu, one of China's most important aerospace centers. Analysts immediately noticed how unconventional the design appeared. Its large wings blended smoothly into the fuselage, creating a tailless flying wing. There were no traditional vertical stabilizers, no obvious tails to betray radar reflections. Three large engines powered the aircraft, an arrangement that no modern stealth fighter has attempted. And most curious of all, the cockpit featured side-by-side -side seating for two crew members, something more often associated with bombers than with nimble fighters. These design elements hinted that China's engineers were not merely copying existing concepts, but instead forging their own path toward dominance in the skies. The choice of December 26th was deeply significant. This date marks the birthday of Mao Zedong, a central figure in Chinese history. By scheduling the J-36's first flight on that date, China signaled that this aircraft was more than a piece of hardware. It was a national statement of progress, achievement, and pride. It tied present-day military advancement to the roots of the modern Chinese state. For intelligence communities around the world, the symbolism was unmistakable. This was not only about technology, but also about demonstrating willpower and intent. The J-36's very existence on that day conveyed a message of arrival, a declaration that China's aerospace industry had matured to a level where it could rival any other on Earth. Before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. At first glance, what makes the J-36 remarkable is its sheer scale. Measuring more than 23 meters in length with a wingspan of nearly 19 meters, it dwarfs the familiar silhouettes of fifth-generation fighters. Its blended body design allows for massive internal volume, something critical for carrying both weapons and fuel. Instead of relying on external stores, which compromise stealth, the J-36 holds everything inside. This design means it can approach contested airspace with its stealth characteristics intact, regardless of whether it is lightly or heavily armed. Its weapon bays are particularly notable, with the central bay measuring approximately 7.5 meters long. To put that in perspective, this internal bay alone is longer than the fuselage of some fourth-generation fighters. The size allows for weapons that most other aircraft could not even carry on external pylons. Inside the cavernous weapons bay, analysts expect the J-36 to carry a range of armaments, from long-range air-to-air missiles to supersonic anti-ship missiles. The ability to house such weapons internally means the aircraft can strike naval groups, including aircraft carriers, while remaining difficult to detect. This presents an entirely new challenge to adversaries that have traditionally relied on carrier groups for power projection. Smaller side bays provide space for short-range missiles or additional sensors, adding flexibility to the aircraft's mission profile. Unlike many fighters, which must sacrifice stealth when fully armed, the J-36 retains its low observability no matter what it carries. This simple design choice increases its survivability and allows it to enter hostile airspace without advertising its presence. The propulsion system of the J-36 is equally unconventional. Most modern fighters use one or two engines, balancing power with efficiency. The J-36, however, employs three. This configuration offers several advantages. First, it delivers raw thrust, allowing the aircraft to reach speeds estimated at around Mach 2.5. Second, it provides redundancy. If one engine fails, the other two can keep the aircraft airborne, an important factor for long-range missions deep into contested territory. Third, and perhaps most importantly, three engines generate extraordinary electrical power. In modern warfare, where radar, electronic warfare, and potentially directed energy weapons require vast amounts of energy. This surplus is invaluable. It means the J-36 can power advanced systems continuously without compromise, giving it an edge over aircraft that must ration their energy use. 
One of the most impressive capabilities enabled by this propulsion system is Super Cruise. Unlike older fighters that must ignite afterburners to break the sound barrier, the J-36 can sustain supersonic flight without them. This has two critical effects. It conserves fuel, extending range, and it reduces the heat signature, making the aircraft harder to detect with infrared tracking systems. Reports suggest the J-36 can carry between 13 and 15 tons of fuel internally, more than many smaller fighters weigh fully loaded. This gives it a combat radius far beyond existing Chinese aircraft and potentially even beyond American designs. Estimates suggest it could operate up to 4,000 kilometers from its base and, under optimized conditions, extend its range to 6,000 kilometers. With such range, American bases as far away as Hawaii could theoretically be within striking distance. The airframe design also deserves attention. The tailless flying wing is not only stealthy but also aerodynamically efficient. The double delta wing configuration gives it stability and performance at both subsonic and supersonic speeds. The leading edges are carefully swept to manage airflow across all flight regimes. The smooth curves and blended body minimize radar reflection points, creating a small radar cross-section. Even the air inlets are designed with stealth in mind. Two wedge-shaped intakes beneath the wings feed the lower engines, while a third intake above the fuselage serves the dorsal engine. These diverterless designs help control airflow while avoiding radar hotspots. Every detail, from inlet shape to exhaust nozzle design, contributes to stealth, efficiency, and survivability. Equally intriguing is the cockpit arrangement. Placing two crew members side by side is unusual for a fighter jet. This configuration is typically associated with bombers or specialized strike aircraft. By giving each pilot their own full display and control systems, the J-36 opens new possibilities. One pilot can focus on flying, while the other manages sensors, electronic warfare, or weapons deployment. In high-stress scenarios involving drone coordination or electronic suppression, this division of labor reduces workload and increases mission effectiveness. It suggests that the J-36 is designed for more than dogfights. It is a command platform, a coordinator, and potentially the centerpiece of networked operations involving unmanned aerial vehicles and other assets. Stealth, range, and payload combine to give the J-36 capabilities that blur the line between fighter, bomber, and command aircraft. It can strike distant targets, escort other aircraft, act as a network hub, or disrupt enemy communications. Its versatility makes it a force multiplier, able to perform roles that previously required multiple different aircraft. This adaptability is what makes the J-36 particularly challenging for adversaries. Military planners must now account for a single platform that can appear in many different operational contexts, each time presenting a different kind of threat. As the aircraft's features became clearer, comparisons with American fighters were inevitable. The F-22 Raptor, long seen as the gold standard of air superiority, suddenly looks more limited. With only two engines and smaller weapons bays, it lacks the range and payload of the J-36. The F-35 Lightning II, designed for versatility, still cannot match the endurance or internal volume of China's new design. Its single engine restricts both power generation and redundancy. The J-36, by contrast, can project power across entire oceanic theaters. Some analysts have even compared it to strategic bombers in terms of reach, while still retaining fighter-like agility. The United States has recognized the challenge, responding with its next-generation air dominance program, though details of that remain classified. The implications for naval power are particularly profound. The J-36's ability to carry long-range anti-ship missiles internally means that carrier strike groups traditionally symbols of American power projection, are now at greater risk. These missiles can travel at supersonic speeds and cover distances that strain even advanced naval defenses. An aircraft able to launch such weapons while remaining largely invisible to radar fundamentally shifts the balance at sea. Naval strategists will need to rethink deployment patterns, defensive postures, and even the future viability of carriers in high-threat environments. Beyond military tactics, the J-36 carries economic and diplomatic consequences. Developing such an aircraft demonstrates that China's industrial base is capable of producing world-class aerospace systems at scale. If production proves efficient, China could field the J-36 in numbers that overwhelm adversaries. Economically, this forces other nations to respond with increased defense spending, redirecting resources from other priorities. 
Diplomatically, the aircraft strengthens China's hand, as advanced military technology often translates into greater influence in negotiations. Allies and competitors alike must reassess their assumptions about China's technological maturity and long-term strategic goals. Training and operational doctrine will also need to evolve. Pilots trained on single-crew fighters must adapt to sharing tasks in a side-by-side -side arrangement. New tactics will emerge, with one pilot perhaps specializing in drone coordination while the other handles navigation and combat maneuvers. Ground crews will need to master maintenance of the complex three-engine system, balancing redundancy with higher servicing demands. Doctrine riders will face the challenge of integrating this versatile platform into broader military structures. Will it serve as a long-range strike aircraft, a command hub, or an air superiority fighter? The truth is likely all of the above, depending on mission requirements. Globally, the reaction to the J-36's unveiling has been swift. Military analysts across Asia, Europe, and North America immediately recognized the aircraft as a game-changer. Some praised China's willingness to experiment with bold design choices rather than follow existing templates. Others warned that the true test will come not from prototypes but from production, deployment, and operational performance. Still, even skeptics acknowledge that China has demonstrated technological competence that many once doubted. By moving beyond imitation into innovation, China has placed itself firmly in the competition for sixth-generation air dominance. As nations respond, a new arms race is accelerating. Programs in Europe, Japan, and the United States will likely speed up as governments push for answers to the J-36. Counter-stealth technologies, new radars, advanced missile defenses, and rival fighters will all see increased investment. In this sense, the J-36 not only reshapes China's capabilities, but also reshapes the global defense industry. It forces others to innovate faster, spend more, and rethink their strategies. The ripple effects will be felt for decades, driving a cycle of technological advancement and counter-advancement. The operational impact cannot be overstated. With its extended range, the J-36 can strike targets far beyond what was previously possible for Chinese aircraft. This alters defensive planning across the Pacific. Bases once considered relatively secure may now fall within its reach. Naval operations must account for an adversary that can appear suddenly at long distance, launch powerful weapons, and vanish under the cloak of stealth. Air defense networks must evolve, adding longer-range radars and integrating space-based tracking systems. The challenge is not only detecting the J-36, but also intercepting it before it can unleash its weapons. While much remains unknown, the very existence of the J-36 is enough to force change. It represents a new philosophy of air power, one that prioritizes range, payload, versatility, and stealth over traditional maneuverability. It suggests that the future of aerial warfare will be decided not by short-range dogfights, but by long-range strikes, electronic dominance, and integrated networks of manned and unmanned systems. In this vision, the J-36 is not simply another fighter but the vanguard of a new generation of warfare. The J-36 also highlights the future role of electronic warfare. In modern conflicts, disabling an adversary's sensors and communications can be more decisive than shooting down their aircraft. With its immense onboard power generation, the J-36 can likely run electronic warfare suites far more advanced than anything previously deployed by China. These systems could jam radar, blind incoming missiles, or even disrupt satellite communications. Such capabilities turn the aircraft into more than a strike platform. It becomes a weapon of information dominance, shaping the battlefield before a single missile is launched. Another aspect to consider is how the J-36 fits into China's broader military modernization. In recent years, China has invested heavily in drones, long-range missiles, and naval expansion. The J-36 ties these elements together, serving as a command node capable of directing unmanned aircraft swarms while coordinating strikes with missile forces. Its range allows it to support naval operations across vast ocean spaces, ensuring Chinese fleets are not left vulnerable to long-range enemy attacks. In this sense, the J-36 is not just an aircraft, but an enabler, providing the connective tissue that binds together multiple layers of China's military power. The psychological effect of unveiling such a revolutionary design should not be underestimated. Adversaries who once believed China was limited to copying older designs must now confront evidence of true innovation. The message is clear. China is willing to take risks, invest resources, and experiment with designs previously thought too complex or impractical. This alters how nations calculate risk in any potential conflict.
The simple knowledge that the J-36 exists forces militaries to prepare for scenarios that were previously theoretical. Deterrence works not only through capabilities, but also through the perception of capabilities. And in this regard, the J-36 has already succeeded. When analyzing its future, one must also consider production realities. Stealth aircraft are notoriously difficult to manufacture, requiring precision tolerances and advanced materials. If China can master mass production of the J-36, it will signal industrial maturity equal to or surpassing any competitor. However, if the design proves too complex or costly, numbers may remain limited, reducing its strategic impact. The real test will come not from prototypes, but from whether squadrons of J-36s appear operational in the coming decade. Should that occur, regional power balances would shift dramatically, and long-standing assumptions about air dominance could be overturned. The global defense industry is already reacting to the unveiling. Western defense companies are increasing investments in next-generation radars, hypersonic weapons, and autonomous drone programs. Nations are reassessing how to allocate limited resources, with some diverting funds from legacy aircraft into future-focused projects. This competitive environment may ultimately accelerate technological progress worldwide, leading to new breakthroughs that ripple across both military and civilian aerospace. In this way, the J-36's influence extends far beyond China's borders, reshaping how the world views the future of aviation and warfare itself. If China ever considers an export version of the J-36, the impact on global arms markets would be enormous. While Beijing has historically been selective about which nations receive its most advanced technologies, even a downgraded version could alter regional balances. Nations that cannot acquire American or European fighters might look to China as a supplier of cutting-edge stealth aircraft. Such exports would not only bring in revenue, but also expand China's sphere of military influence, creating dependencies that tie foreign air forces more closely to Chinese technology, training, and doctrine. Training pilots for such a complex aircraft will be a major undertaking. Traditional fighter training emphasizes high maneuverability and quick reflexes, but the J-36 requires a broader skill set. Pilots must master long-range mission planning, electronic warfare tactics, and coordination with unmanned aerial vehicles. The side-by-side -side seating arrangement means that teamwork and communication become as critical as individual flying ability. China's Air Force will likely have to develop entirely new training programs, simulators, and doctrine to prepare crews for the demands of this sixth-generation platform. For Europe, the emergence of the J-36 places pressure on collaborative programs like the Global Combat Air Program being developed by the United Kingdom, Italy, and Japan. Timelines that once stretched decades into the future may need to be shortened, lest the technological gap widen further. Governments will be pressed to commit greater funding to ensure that their sixth-generation projects remain competitive. This means defense budgets across Europe are likely to rise, diverting resources from other sectors. The J-36 has thus become a catalyst for a worldwide acceleration in fighter development, reshaping economic priorities as well as strategic ones. Looking further ahead, the J-36 could also influence doctrines around unmanned warfare. With its large internal bays, powerful sensors, and two-person crew, it is ideally positioned to act as a command platform for swarms of drones. In this vision of future combat, the J-36 would not need to enter every dogfight itself. Instead, it could launch, direct, and coordinate dozens of unmanned aircraft, overwhelming opponents through sheer numbers and complexity. This transforms the fighter from a single combat unit into the centerpiece of an aerial ecosystem, one that multiplies its effectiveness far beyond its own physical capabilities. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means a lot.